Hello, it's Nicole, your Mad About Meds pharmacist. Today we're going to be talking about insect repellents, tick, mosquito, all those types of bug repellents, so stay tuned. So spring is here and summer's right around the corner. Since we're all venturing out of our winter hibernations, you might start thinking about insect and tick repellents. So products containing DEET, that's D-E-E-T, are still considered the gold standard for insect repellents, and these are my go-to recommendations for most people that require insect repellents. Look for labels that contain DEET 10 to 30%. Look for brand names such as Off Deep Woods. Higher concentrations of DEET may last longer. However, protection actually plateaus around 50%. So any products containing more than 50% DEET, I would generally avoid. DEET 10 to 30% is also safe during pregnancy and can be used in children ages two months and older. And you may have heard about some rare toxicities associated with DEET, such as seizures, but actually DEET has about 60 years of safety data to back it up. Toxicities that have been associated with DEET products are from ingestion and eating of the products, other improper uses, people not using them correctly. So if you don't like the smell or feeling of products that contain DEET, I don't blame you, look for products that contain the insect repellent picaridin. It's odorless, non-sticky, non-greasy, and doesn't damage plastics or delicate fabrics like DEET can. So look for brand names such as Off Clean Fill or Naturepel. There isn't as much safety data with picaridin, but it does work just as well as DEET. Picaridin products may also be used in pregnancy and up to a 10% formulation can be used in children down to two months of age and older. Another insect repellent, oil of lemon eucalyptus, 30%, is one that's commonly found in some brands. It can be effective against mosquitoes but it actually doesn't really protect well against ticks. So avoid this one also in children less than three years old because there's not much data there. There's also some combination products that provide sun protection and insect repellents. Generally, I don't recommend this. Sunscreen really does need to be reapplied frequently throughout the day and insect repellents only need to be applied maybe once or twice. So buying two separate products here is the right way to go. So if you do need both sun protection and an insect repellent, it's best to apply that sunscreen first and then put the repellent on top. Just be sure to reapply that sunscreen as needed. Other insect repellents I've mentioned that I don't recommend include something called IR 3535. This can cause damage to plastics and fabrics and it doesn't have great efficacy data. Citronella oil, also not very effective. Oral supplements such as vitamin B, garlic, not very effective. Also, you might see a lot of repellent bracelets or wearable ultrasonic devices. Not generally that effective either. So there's likely going to be a new substance on the market that contains a substance of a funny name, Nucatone. This substance actually comes from the skin of grapefruit and the bark of the Nootka cypress tree. It's all natural and it's actually been shown to be effective at repelling ticks and mosquitoes. So keep an eye out for that one in the future. So I can't leave here without telling you a joke. So why did the mosquito go to see the therapist? Well, somebody told him that he sucked. Get it? All right, that was really corny. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like the video. Please like. Also subscribe. I would really love that. And I will see you all next time.